I have your file in front of me and I understand your question and um, the important thing is you've done everything right. The only thing you did, and I want to see this better, so I'm, I opened it up exactly the way that you sent it to me, but for a minute um, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to make a layer of black so we can see this better so I'm not seeing the checkerboard background of the file. Okay, so I'm going to make a new layer. Um, I made the foreground color black. You can see I'm going all the way to the lower right. And I'm going to hit Option Backspace, or I'm um, Alt Backspace or Option Delete. Now, by having that black layer there, I can see this brick better because you put the opacity back, which was what you should have done. But, and here's the but, I'm going to put this back up to 100% because I'm turning on your graffiti here. You didn't get all of the mortar that you could have gotten. You got the one part of the mortar, which was the light part, but you didn't get the other part. And it's real easy to do. So we're going to actually create a new mortar one layer um, channel. I'm sorry. So I'm going to click back to um, the RGB image. Okay. And what I should do is throw away mortar one, which is kind of what I want you to do. Okay. So I'm throwing it away. Now, I want to take and get rid of this mask. Okay, so I'm going to right hand click and delete it. As soon as I delete it, the graffiti's back to normal, right? Okay, so I can turn it off. Good. Now, that now that I have put your opacity back to 100% on the brick, let's move in close. Let's use the magic wand and make sure it's the magic wand that's the one down here, right there. Not the object selection, not the quick selection, but the magic wand. Now I'm going to leave the tolerance at 12 and turn off contiguous. Now watch. I'm going to grab this mortar here, which is kind of what you did, but I'm going to hold the shift key and grab the gray mortar. Now I've got more of it and it was only two clicks. Okay, two clicks, and that was enough of the mortar to make all of this work. Okay, now let's save that selection as mortar one. Now, with that selected, let's do, okay, with that selected, let's click to the graffiti layer. Turn it back on, Brian. I'll move it up so you can see it. And let's um, add a layer mask by clicking to the graffiti layer and just clicking the layer mask button. Now, obviously, like in the movie, I did it backwards. So if it comes out like this, just control Z back and hold your alt or option key and click on the mask. And now you have it. Now you see how I have more of the mortar showing through? Now this is going to make it work for what I need it to work for, which is to create the shadow. Okay. All right. I'm not even going to go through and fill this with gray. Um, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm going to deselect control D or command D and I'm going to option or alt click on the mask to show you. Well, I've got big black thing here and it should be kind of a gray thing here. Okay, so if I wanted to make this a 50% gray, this is what I would do. Go over to the mask that's over here. All right, go over to that mask. And let's Option or Alt click on it. I'm sorry, Command or Control click on it to turn it into a selection. Now, it is a selection. Do you see how if I turn this off here and turn this off, you can see how that's a selection. Okay. Now, let me examine the outer part. Okay, now if I were to fill it up with gray, it's going to fill up the outside with gray, meaning, let me turn this back on so you can see what I'm talking about and turn this back on. Okay. I need to, um, if, if I fill right now, it's going to fill inside where the bricks are. So if I am selected on this and I make the black right here, look, click on your black and make it into a middle gray. Now I'll show you if I alt or alt backspace fill, the bricks just got filled in and that's not what I want. Look at the mask over there. Look at this mask. That's not what I want. So I'm going to command or control Z back. So what I want to do 
is inverse the selection. So I go to select, inverse, and then, then I fill it with gray. So now it's alt backspace. And now I've kind of toned that down a little bit. So um, I'm going to option or alt click on the mask again to show you. So now it's not black, it's gray, right? Okay. So you might have to do that a couple times to get it right. Now let's um, just click over to the image. Now, what I want to do is to create a mortar two mask. Okay, a mortar two channel. Now, how do you do it? Well, you move in close, Brian, to where a corner is. And I want to move this down and to the right. Okay, so I'm going to hit the M key or the B key. I'll hit the M key. And I'm going to use my map, my cursor keys. And I'm going to go down three and over three or four. Now, I've done it. Now I'm going to actually select and save that selection as mortar two. Now, um, I'll turn everything off so you can see what's going to happen. <clears throat> so I'm going to go over here to the channels palette. I don't have to click on these, okay? I just have to command or control click on mortar one. Now, if I move in, you know that I moved mortar two down and to the right. So I'm going to command or control, so hold command or control, then hold alt or option, and you'll see a minus symbol where, where mortar two is. Look, I'm over in the channel palette, and I see a minus symbol, and I'm going to click. Now, I've actually subtracted mortar two from mortar one. Okay, now I select and save it just so I don't have to do it again, as shadow. Now, if I mess up, all I have to do is command or control click on shadow to make this work. Now, here's the simple thing. Let's turn on all your other stuff and click to your shadow layer. Okay, now I'll zoom in up here so you can see what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to fill this with a dark, a dark brick color. Okay, a real dark color. It doesn't even have to be brick. It can just be like a dark color. Okay, so I'm going to use black for now, all right? So you see how I have black in the foreground color, right? Now when I do it, it's going to get too dark. Okay, so I'm going to hit Alt or Option Backspace. Now, do you see by me actually having this shadow there? And how did I get it? Well, I had Mortar 1. I made a selection of it by Command or Control clicking right over here. Then I moved it down and to the right. Then I made it, I saved that under here as mortar two. Then I went and made a selection of mortar one, which I just did again. I subtracted mortar two by going control and alt and or command and option and doing that by just subtracting it. Then I saved it as shadow. Now, I'll back off on it, and it's going to be too, 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 too dark. See how it's just weirdly dark? So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to Gaussian blur it by one. So you have to make sure it's deselected. Okay. Gaussian blur it by one. Just by one pixel. Okay. Now, let's tone it down by taking the opacity away and making it more like that. Now when I move back on it, it has a shadow. Now when I move in close, you can see there's without the shadow, there's with the shadow. And now it looks like the bricks are recessed in the wall. You know, like the mortar is recessed. The bricks are actually popping out a little bit. And that makes it really cool. And again, in my other movie, you can uncheck this link. I think you know about it. Uncheck this link between the graffiti and the mask. All right, click to the graffiti image, hit the V key, and you can move this around the wall. Now, I hope that helped, and let me know if it did.